Hello, welcome back. I mentioned in another video recently that I got a hold of this, uh, this lovely little 7 inch touchscreen from Waveshare recently. I'm just going to do a quick um, quick demo of this hopefully and uh, just so we can see what it looks like working. I've already had a play around with this recently and I've got a copy of the most recent version of RetroPie set up on my Raspberry Pi 3. I've also done a pseudo app get update on it recently and app get upgrade. So hopefully we're all ready to go. Let's try and zoom in a little bit. Here we get to see what the zoom works, how the zoom works on my uh, fancy camera. The Raspberry Pi 3 boots so quickly, it's ridiculous. Compared to all the other models, it's absolutely ridiculous. But obviously, it still takes a while. Also, got a little speaker plugged in, so we'll be able to hear something this time. Can we go in any closer there? That's probably as close as we need. So, I have put some ROMs on this already. So, uh, why isn't my keyboard working? Ah, there it is. It is working. Fine. Let's have a look at. Uh, I was trying Final Burn Alpha and it just didn't seem to want to work with some of the games, but never mind. Let's go to MAME. MAME works just fine. Uh, yeah, Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo. And uh, I promise I won't play this for long because I freaking love this game. Let's uh, zoom back out a bit. Hopefully the uh, lighting isn't going to be quite so messed up. But. Uh, And you can hear sound, yay sound. Hopefully this is coming through on the camera. Uh, what I'm going to do first actually, let me just quit that. I'm just going to turn the sound down a little bit so you can actually hear me. Because uh, much fun as that game is, you do need to be able to hear me. Sound settings. Uh, let's just drop that to about 85%. The volume tails off very, very quickly. I'm using the 3.5mm uh, jack on the Pi for this because I don't have any USB audio devices spare. There we go. This sometimes happens with this ROM. It, um, there we go. It was a bit weird, so hopefully this is coming through on the camera, but this looks absolutely fantastic. It's an IPS screen. I'll, um, I'll link in down below the um, manufacturer's website. I picked this up from Amazon, but you can buy it direct from the manufacturer's website. Uh, let me just have a quick look and pause you a second, just so I can tell you what the price is. Uh, wave shear 7 inch C, let's have a look. Anytime. Oh, there we go. So in one of quantities is 62, 63 dollars directly from the manufacturer's website. Now, I don't know uh, what they're going to charge in terms of shipping, but uh, I paid 46 quid for this from Amazon uh, in the UK. Um, I'll link you directly to the manufacturer's website. You're probably best off going there, depending on where you are in the world. You can get it from third-party retailers like um, Gearbest or uh, AliExpress or something like that. Obviously, I got mine from Amazon, um, but. You know, it could be a clone, it might not be the exact one, and to be fair, this screen is, I've been well impressed with it, so let's just unpause that so we can actually show the screen working. And like I said, I'm not going to play this for too long because I absolutely love this game. Yeah, but hopefully um, uh, this is going to come through on the footage, but this screen in practice looks absolutely fantastic. IPS makes such a huge difference. Have this. Apologies about the clicky clacky noise as well. I'm using in a, a spare mechanical keyboard for this. Now, any slowdown that you're seeing on this is not the Raspberry Pi. Uh, this is the Raspberry Pi 3 model and it's so, so fast compared to the others. It, technically, it's not, um, in terms of modern processor speeds, it's not that far ahead. Um, what are we talking, quad core, 1.2 gigahertz. Um, is it 1.2? Yeah, 1.2 gigahertz quad core ARM processor, which by modern standards is not huge, it's not fast at all, but it is enough to make a huge, huge difference to the Raspberry Pi. And I think I've talked for long enough now, that's um, more than enough of this screen. But 
I can't really see it on the viewfinder for the camera, but um, hopefully that's going to come across. But the quality of this compared to the 5 inch version I've got is absolutely phenomenal. That's enough of that now. Thank you for that. So what I will do is I'm just going to shut this down and let's get, um, let's put, um, let's fire up Raspbian and I can demonstrate the touchscreen here. So I haven't done anything to make the touchscreen work. I haven't installed any custom drivers. All I did was install the latest version and just do app get update, app get upgrade. And that was it. Touchscreen worked natively, which hopefully we're going to be able to see. Now this is going to be awkward to do when I reach around over my camera and uh, try and get the SD card out. I'm probably going to cut this out because I have a feeling that the camera is pointing at my armpit at the moment and you really don't need to see that. Where's my Raspbian SD card? Is that it? Am I in? I'm in. Ugh, this is so awkward. Uh, I'm making a mess here. Here we go. Can we still see the screen? We can. Zoom in a bit again. Now I have set, uh, the only modification, I said I made no modifications, I have had to make some modifications to config.txt for this. Um, they're shown on the manufacturer's website, it's on their wiki page. Um, basically it just you just have to force the Raspberry Pi to use the right HDMI mode because it's not a supported mode, it's not a natively supported mode. Uh, and you have to enable USB overcurrent for this to supply enough power over the USB. Um, yeah, you really do need a good high quality power supply for this to work. Hopefully we're gonna be able to see this, but the freaking touchscreen works absolutely perfectly. Now it is capacitive touch as well. It doesn't support any uh, any gestures or anything like that, and it doesn't seem to support multi-touch. I can't seem to do left click for hold down for um, for a right click. That doesn't seem to work. There you go. Uh, if I hold it down, it just gives me this weird document icon and I don't know what that means but that can be solved in software apparently from what I was reading yesterday that seems to be a problem with with um, with Debian rather than a Raspberry Pi problem but it can be solved through software so anyway don't want to go on too long um, just wanted to do a quick demo of this uh, quick demo of this screen um, I gotta say it it looks absolutely amazing. It looks so good compared to the five inch one. It really is worth the additional. I mean, I don't know how much the five inch one is these days, but um, it really is worth the extra. What I will say quickly about these wave share screens is that there are a couple of different models, um, including the seven inch version. There are a couple of different models of it. And this goes for most of the sizes they produce. So for the five inch, you seem to have an A and a B version. The A version, I think, uses seems to use the GPIO uh, for the touchscreen portion, whereas the B version tends to use uh, USB. And the same goes for this. Uh, the same goes for the for the seven inch as well. Difference with the seven inch though is obviously there's an A and there's a B. But I've got the C version here, and the difference with the C version is that uh, first of all the firmware is completely different, so it doesn't rely on on. Um, on drivers from WaveShare, it just presents itself as a HID class device, which is fantastic. Um, and it's uh, it's high resolution. It's 1024 by 76 uh, by 1024 by 600, as opposed to 800 by 480. And finally, um, it's an IPS panel, which makes such a huge difference. Uh, but I'll link it in down below anyway. Right, so that's probably enough. I'm going to leave it there. And uh, thanks for watching.